some important terms that you have to remember while you design an HTML page. First thing is tag, which is being used to specify the regions of the HTML document which the browser will read later. Tags will look like whatever it is shown here. So you have to start with the angular bracket and close it with the angular bracket. So this tag will tell what the browser should do with the text that is embedded with the, within the tag or whatever content that is any, uh, like given within the tag. Then we uh, have to know what is an element. Element is a complete tag having an opening tag and a closing tag. So whatever uh, like uh, we have with a tag and a closing tag, you count as an element. Then we have to know what is an attribute. So attribute is used to change the value of an element in HTML. So usually an element has several attributes. So attribute will give some extra features or special features to an uh, like a tag. So uh, like in, in order to make it more interactive, these attributes are very useful. So what are the basic HTML page tags? The first one is doc type. So doc type doesn't have a closing tag. So this tells the browser which set of standards your page adheres to. And it also identifies the location of the standard by linking to the URL. So this has to be given. Uh, this is not a mandatory one. If you don't want, you can remove it. Then uh, we have the HTML tag and the slash HTML tag, which is called as the root tag of the uh, HTML web page. So which frames the entire HTML page. So here, this without this HTML and slash HTML, we cannot uh, create one HTML document. So these are the root tags or the base tags. Then we uh, have the head tag, which frames the identification information of the page, that's such as you know, can give title and that is being uh, transferred to the browser and search engines. So it may not be only title, you can even include scripts inside the uh, HTML, uh, head, head section. Uh, so it will it, it'll, it'll be executed by, by giving a special preference because head is uh, uh, considered to be the most important part. So what was given in the head section will be executed first. Then we have the body and the slash body tag, which frames the content of the page to be displayed in the browser window. So whatever you give it within the body slash body will be formed as the part of the web page. Uh, it forms the body of the web page. Then comes the title, uh, which gives the name of the page that will appear on the top of the browser window and it will be listed in the search engines. So it is always contained within the head and the slash. So these are the base tags for any HTML document. So let us move on. And uh, next is HTML elements. So an HTML document will always begin and end with a HTML tag and a slash HTML tag, as I told you. So uh, the thing we have to remember is every time you uh, start with an HTML tag, you have to close with a slash HTML tag. Otherwise, your program will not work. Likewise, for it is applicable for all the tags. You need to open uh, a tag. Likewise, you have to close the tag. There are few tags which will not have any closing tags, except that all the other tags should be closed. Then the extension we have already seen. Uh, like it is .html or .htm. So preferably use .html. And uh, this is the standard structure of HTML. So you have to uh, include HTML and slash HTML. In between, you can include whatever other tags that are needed and you can get the web page. So this is a sample uh, screenshot of a web page. This web page doesn't contain anything. It's a blank web page because in the previous slide if you have seen we have given only html and slash html so nothing is there within the web page so you have only a blank page now 
we have to include the head section next so head can be used with the title tag as I, I told you earlier so this will be seen as a browser's name usually in the upper left side so I am including the head section along the title the title has to be closed and the head section is closed and the HTML has to be so uh, closed now the important thing another important thing you have to note here is the nesting of tags so nesting of tags should be proper so now I have to close the title because it's an inner tag then you have to close head section which is the outer tag then finally you have to close with the slash HTML if you're not going to close the tags properly then you will not get the web page properly and uh, as the uh, browsers don't display any error messages you will not able you'll be able to find the errors uh, it, this HTML is not uh, similar to any other compiler languages where you get the errors so you see the errors and you rectify it so you have to uh, manually see the program and find out what is the error so you have to be careful while opening and closing the tags so this is the uh, screen you'll get when you execute the previous uh, program like this particular program when you execute you'll get this along with the title my home so I have given title as my home so that will be appearing on the title bar of the browser then the title given the head of the HTML code appears in the title bar of the browser as I showed you in the previous slide because there are no HTML instructions for formatting, there is nothing like I have given only the title, I have not included any body section. So there are now no uh, HTML instructions for formatting or the line breaks, etc. And the size of the browser window will affect the display of the page. And this is an important consideration in designing the web pages. What looks good on full screen may look bad when viewed in small window. So you have to be very careful while designing the web pages so you have to consider how how the elements have to be positioned and how the elements has to be uh, uh, like dealt with such that your display will not be a problem either if it's a big screen or it's a small screen then let us come to the body uh, tag so uh, the body element is one that defines the beginning of the page contents like we have titles paragraphs photos music etc so uh, here we have html so as uh, the previous one we have the head section then the title then we have the head section then we try to include the body section and finally i close with the slash html and i have included some content here so that is to be displayed in the web page so this is uh, one small example so now also if you see the nesting of uh, tags is being done and uh, this uh, nesting has to be done properly as i told uh, like i have to close the title first then the head section then i open the body i have to close the body and finally i have to close the html anything which is given beyond this slash html will not work so this will be our output so i have got a content which i have specified in the body section <coughs> then we have simple formatting tags such as bold italic underline break and the paragraph so bold is to make a particular word or a sentence or a paragraph look more bolder than the uh, other parts of the uh, web page so this particular thing also has a closing tag so you have to open the b tag and a slash b and i can also make it as an italic like slanting font uh, so i have to specify i and slash i then if you want to underline you can use u and slash u which will underline the particular text so if you want to break if you want to have a break in your web page i can give a tag called as br now you would have noticed here i have not used any slash br here it is not required so that's why i told you in the previous 
uh, slide that is a previous slide one of the previous slides where some of the tags will not have the closing tag so br is one kind of tag which doesn't have any closing tag then we have the paragraph tag that's another very important uh, tag to create the paragraphs so here we have to use p and slash p within the angular brackets so this is to create the paragraph and this is the sample code for uh, formatting like uh, this is another example by uh, like uh, which uses the simple formatting uh, tags these are the tags which, have, which we have seen and that is what i have used here now this is a small uh, <clears throat> a paragraph kind of a structure so now in this i have tried out all the basic tags uh, this is u and slash u so you have to have an underline here then i have italics uh, in uh, like uh, inside the u i have the i tag also which will make this as an italic one now you see the nesting u has to be closed uh, with, uh, like after the i is closed if you close it before i you will get an error <coughs> then i'm using a br here which will create a break and then i have a paragraph tag now this alone will be created as a paragraph and this paragraph is made as bold and you will see that this particular line will be distinct from the other lines and i close the slash body and the slash html now this is the output so i have used the uh, italics and underline for the html word so that is reflected here and i have created a paragraph as you see this paragraph stands uh, uh, like different uh, and also it is bold so this is how this particular bold and paragraph tag works and this is an example for underline and the uh, italics and we also got a title so this is a very good example of uh, like a program that uses the basic formatting tags next we have the heading tags so heading tags we have from h1 to h6 now this thing if you see um, h1 to h6 now our initial perception will be if h1 uh, is all, like if you see the number one it, you, you may think that h1 will be having the least size but when you use the h1 tag a heading will be having the highest uh, order of heading that is the size will be the highest when i use the h1 tag and it decreases as i go about and finally h6 will have the least heading size so now in this is an inbuilt uh, a uh, way of creating one heading so you can create inbuilt headings using this h1 to h6 tags so let us see the example so when i use the h1 tag you are you will get a very big heading and it decreases and you can see the heading of uh, six is released having the least size so you should not get confused so i'm repeating again so heading one is having a bigger size because we are using the h1 tag and heading six is having the least size because it is uh, using the h6 tag now this is the thing which, which is very important you have to see here because we will confuse like if, if, uh, by seeing the number six we might think that it is the having the uh, highest uh, size but heading one will be having the um, size uh, more size than the other headings then let us see what are the attributes so many tags may contain attributes now if you take any of the tags mostly it will have attributes or the additional function definitions or modifications to the tag in which it is uh, contained so i can use these attributes to make my tag look special for example the body tag can contain extra information about the html document in the form of the attributes like a background color or a background image like that you can have for a body tag so that it will look different and the user will like it now each attribute is contained within the tag that is it modifies that it modifies and some tags 
contain several attributes is separated by a space. So I can have more than one attribute for a particular tag, and uh, uh, that tag has to be uh, like that uh, attribute has to be separated by space. And the text and the BG color attributes, when placed inside the body tag, will modify the colors of the text and the background of an HTML document. These are some of the examples. So each attribute value should be placed within a single code or a double quotes. So inside the body, we have the attributes as text, BG color, and background so text will change the text color bg color will change the background color and background will change the background image of the body section now this is a small example so i have used html head sec a head tag and the title tag then i have closed it then i open the body tag i have given the text this is the color of the text and bg color I have given some color code here also. I have given some color code and there's a current. Then I'm closing the body and the HTML tag. Now, the thing you would have noticed here is there's something like a, it's a, like a number or it's a alphabet here. So now this is a hexadecimal representation of color. So coming to color, I can represent in three ways. One way is giving the color name directly, or you can give it as RGB values or you can give it as a hexadecimal code now the best thing is use the color name that is the recommended way like i can give red color or a black color or green color whatever it is you give the color name directly now html5 allows even very uh, interesting or uh, um, with different colors like uh, tomato red uh, like a sky blue whatever you think if you give it it will be treated as a color so you can use those colors or color names also so you can uh, be more interactive with the user by using the colors which are more specific towards their uh, need so this is how the page will be displayed so this page displays a white text on a black background because i have given the color code like that so now this is the chart which says this is the color this is the color in the terms of hexadecimal representation and this is in the rgb representation so all put as zero with the hash will give you the black color and white color all are f's will give you a white color similarly uh, if you say rgb 000 it has to be black and if it is rgb 255 255 255 it should be white color or i can give the color name directly that as i told you that is the best way of uh, giving the color uh, color to a particular element then we come to the font tag so here the uh, font tag uses attributes here like size and color so font size will be three for this particular text and color will be red now i am showing two here and i have given a color blue then font face i have given it as verdana and color as green so i can give the color size here i have given the color here and also the font face the font face is what type of font i want i can specify it here so this is how you will get the output Now, uh, formally, the HTML document, uh, indicate, like the, at the beginning of uh, a particular HTML document, we indicate the version of the HTML used usually. So it is the first tag of the HTML document, and uh, we do it like this. So doc type HTML public WPC slash VTV HTML 4.0. So we are using 4.0 here and the last two letters of the declaration of 
doc type specify the language now en is specified here so it should be english and html and slash html tag is optional here because this is a type of document which doesn't require the html and slash html tag So next is we are going to see doc type. So DTD defines the syntax for the language and DTD is public and it is denoted as public text definition. Now what is DTD? It is document type definition. It is like specifying a particular uh, syntax for a language. Now syntax is nothing but you have to follow a particular uh, structure so that your uh, program works properly. So I am specifying to the browser that I have to follow this particular standard such that your web pages will follow that and you know, it will be displayed. Now, uh, DDD is public and it is denoted as public text definition. So, DDD stands for document type definition. And W3C is a sponsoring agent. As I told you, W3C stands for Worldwide Consortium. Worldwide Web Consortium. And uh, EN stands uh, for the in the language English. So these are the uh, doc type tags which we have. So it can be like this, or it can be tran transitional, or it can be frame set. Then we have some attributes here like class, DAR, ID, lang, version, and XML NS. So class will specify the class of the element. They are used the direction of the neutral text and ID is a unique alphanumeric identifier for the tag and LAN says the base language used for the tag and the version it's a deprecated and stored in the doc type tag and XMLNS declares a namespace for custom tags in an HTML document. So these are some of the HTML attributes which are there. Then what are the head attributes we are going to see? Uh, similar to the previous one, we have the class, DAR, ID, LAN, all these things. There's something called as profile, which gives the location of one or more white space separated. And there's something called a style, which is an inline style indicating how to render the element. Now, this we will be using uh, frequently. Now, next title, as I told you earlier, title is the default one. We will be using it inside the head section. And title is also an optional uh, attribute. So if you don't want, you can remove it. So it holds the additional information for the element like a tool tip, etc. The body tag will have, have attributes like link, a link, b link, bg color, background bottom margin, top margin, margin width, margin height, line, text, left margin, right margin, all these things. Now, these are the different uh, attributes which you can use inside a body. So link, a link, v link says the status of a link, how a link should be. So that is specified by this link, a link and v link, whether it is active or it is in some other state will be specified by this particular attributes. So you can give background colors, background image, you can set the margin, you can say the margin width, height, you can uh, set the left margin, right margin, all these things can be done uh, within the body by means of this particular attributes. Now text formatting can be done by all these tags like you can be P tag, center tag, H1 to H6 tags, B, I tag, U tag, so all the things we have already seen. Then we have uh, something called the teletype text. We have emphasized text. We can make a text look more emphasized. Then we have something called a code, which defines a piece of computer code. And we can also create abbreviations. We can create acronyms. We can create a bidirectional override. You can also uh, create a sample output of a computer program. Then you can strike through. Then you can give big size text, small size text, and uh, 
So you can also make a particular uh, text as strong. You can make it as link. And you can also give the subscript and the superscripts. So these are some of the text formatting uh, tags we have in HTML. Then we have a font tag. So font tag will have all these attributes like face, color, size, again, and the font size. Now face will give the what type uh, level say what type of font has to be used. Color attribute will um, <coughs> specify what color to be used, and size tag will give the size of the font, and align tag will give the alignment for the particular uh, font. And if you want to specify the point size also, that can be given along with the font tag. Now, what about the present day and the arrangement text? So we have br, no br, wbr. P, mark you, DIA, span, and the layer. In this, I'll explain some of the important things alone. BR is for break, no BR is for no break, WBR is for word break, and uh, this is for P tag. If there's something called mark you, which is not there in HTML5, mark you will, will scroll the text from one part of the screen to another part. It might be from left to right or right to left or from top to bottom or bottom to top. Uh, but that particular thing has been removed in HTML5. Then we have a div uh, tag which will create different blocks in your web page. I can separate the sections of web page by using the div. This is also a very important uh, uh, tag which can be used. And next is the span which will group all the inline elements. And we also have a layer. These are all of less importance, but the things need to be concentrated here is BR, you know, BR, uh, P tag, and DIV, and also span. Span is used sometimes. And you can also you include comments like any other language. You can include comments in your HTML section. So it has to start with an angular packet, close with an angular packet. Then we have an exclamation and two hyphens and then we have two hyphens so this is the format for specifying the comments then we are going to see the most important part of our presentation this is the hyperlinks so hyperlinks will create link between one web page and another web page which is the base concept of the internet and how the internet works depends upon how you create the hyperlinks. Now, let us see something regarding the hyperlinks. So the chief power of HTML doc, uh, like a document comes from its ability to link the text or an image to another document or a section of the document. So without which uh, I told you the HTML is of no use. Uh, these links are called as hyperlinks. And browser by default highlights the hyperlinks with colors and uh, like or with underlines, but that can be removed. Uh, we will discuss this later. Um, so HTML uses anchor tag, that is a tag to link to another page on the web. So it can be either on another page on the website, or it can be even a local document in your computer. So it can be. So it can be a web page on the same folder as I told you. It can be in a different folder or it can be even an outside page on the internet. So I have to specify like this a href is equal to in double quotes you have to specify the URL http uh, colon to backslashes www.hawaii.com edu slash this and this is the content that is to be displayed um, as a hyperlink so if you uh, see the page this will be underlined and you have again you have to close this with a slash a and href is an attribute of the a tag so a tag is called as an anchor tag so you have to understand this in order to move on this is the most important tag of an HTML document.
Now, if you see this um, program, so I have given a title, then I have given a text color, then the background color, then I'm saying that link should be of red color. Um, then the different states of a link I am giving as green color and yellow color, active link, and uh, the different states I am given here. And here I am creating three links. I'll tell about this li later. Um, this a tag will create a link, as I told you earlier. This is the word that is to be used as a hyperlink. So here, if you see in the screenshot, so that particular word will be created and it will be off underlined and if you click it will get connected to a another page now uh, this particular uh, pro uh, like a program will create three links and this ol and slash ol will create a unordered list oh sorry uh, pardon me it is ordered list ol stands for ordered list so that's why i have the numbering as one two three and li will create a list item so here I have created an address and then I have again created one hyperlink and that hyperlink involves a image. So when you click the image, you will be linked to a, another location and you have to close the address and finally close the body and the HTML. So this is how you work with the hyperlinks. Next, we need to see what is an image. So image is again a very important thing that has to be uh, included inside a web page. So without the uh, uh, images, your web page will not be very uh, interesting. So images will have attributes like SRC, with height, alt, align, border, uh, GYN, SRC, V space, H space, is map loop low src the name here i'll tell you what are the things which are frequently used src is giving for source, source uh, of the image and height and width are to give the height width for the image alt is for giving an alternate text this is another very important thing for example if your image is not getting displayed due to some reasons uh, an alternate text will be displayed in place of the image that is alt and align will align your image wherever you want it will align it and you can even do a border uh, so these are things are basic ones this is very important and for creating uh, image mapping we use is map where you can create hotspots in your images and you can display some text and you can make a image clickable such that image can connect to another web page so that is one thing that we can do in html by creating the uh, hard spots then we have something called as an inline uh, image so in inline images we are going to create an image by using the src tag uh, so image tag and the src attribute i'm giving a name here so that is the name of the image that i need to be uh, using it here and uh, i'm giving the alignment as bottom and I'm giving the width and the height as 50 and 50. Now, if you have seen everything, I have to put it within the double quotes. That's very, very important. And uh, source, I have given as the file name dot jpg. If I want to give like this, one important thing you have to note here, this image has to be in the same folder as your HTML document. Then only this particular uh, thing will work. Otherwise, you have to give the entire location of the uh, particular image. For example, c colon slash uh, my documents slash the image name dot jpg right so you have to give like that so here i have given different uh, like uh, alignment here bottom middle and the top and i give the height and width as the same one you can even change it and you can give it then you can uh, even uh, do the uh, justification here so i am saying uh, align is equal to left and align is equal to right so you can see in the output it is put to the left side and here it is put to the right side so uh, 
this can be also done such that your image stands out and it doesn't disturb your uh, text in the web page now linking to a page in the same folder how it is done so i can use the file name directly so as i told for the image this also uh, applies here so uh, if i want i want to use this particular uh, format that particular linking document has to be in the same folder so if you have a page named as html xml the same folder as your index.html index.html is your base html document right so base files can be named as uh, html uh, like index.html so clicking the above link in your index page will send the user to your resume page this is called as a document relative link i can give even location of the uh, HTML document by giving like c colon slash my document slash resume dot html that is also uh, possible uh, if it is in a different folder and if i want link to an online uh, url i can give the url name directly like www.gmail.com or google.co.in all these things can be given as a uh, value for the href now linking to a page in a different folder i told you i can give it like this so if you can create a lot of folders on a server you might need to know the this document little shortcut now i told you you have to give the full thing now i can also give it in short form like i can give like dot dot slash resume dot html this tells the browser that link is in one folder above the current folder okay then i can also give it like this images slash image this dot html so the link tells the browser to go to the images folder in order to find the images dot html in the uh, web, uh, html web page right so this is how you deal with the specifying the location of the uh, image now linking outside web page on an internet now this will require full http uh, address and will direct the users to a page outside of website so i told you earlier so i can give like www.vad.ac.in slash mobile so i have to use full format like http slashes then the address and i have to enclose it within the nav code so this also can be done to link a page which is outside the internet and you can display an image using object tag also so the object uh, uh, SR, like uh, object is an attribute SRC and you can give the file name and the type and you can also give the standby as an uh, attribute for the object tag and you can close the object tag. So you can uh, specify the file name and the type of file that is image which is of format PNG and I am giving a uh, like an alternate text that is called as an uh, like uh, alternate text in uh, in HTML, right? If your uh, image is not getting displayed, this particular text will be displayed. So I have to close this also by use, means of slash object. Then we have to see what is HTML list. So now there are three types of list I can create. That is order list, an order list, and definition list. So order list will create like one, two, three, four, or it can be Roman letters, one, two, three, four, or uh, it can be A, B, C, D. So it is a ordered way of creating one list. Unordered list will have bullets. You can have even images as a unordered list items. Then a definition list will have uh, a particular word and its definition. So this particular, uh, other thing as i told you well will list the items using a plain bullets ol it's an order list this will use different schemes of numbers to list your items and the definition list this arranges your item in the same way as they arranged in a dictionary and uh, li is for creating the list item and let us see about dt and dt also we see an example so this is how you create an unordered list so you will and slash you will you have to give and in between i have to create the list items so if you see the screenshot so here you have bullet points right so this is for the unordered list 
Next is uh, giving different types of bullets. As I told you, I can even uh, change the type um, as square or it can be disc or it can be circle. Then I am using that attribute and trying it. Right. So I am getting the display here. So this is a square type um, of an ordered list. <coughs> this is the order type. So order type, um, as I told you, it will create by default the uh, numbers. One, two, three, four. How much of items you create, it will be uh, including, uh, including, uh, like it will be included in the list, uh, and it will be giving the number. Then. If I want to change something with a order list, I can do that. So I can say it either can be one, two, three, four, or capital Roman letters, or small uh, lowercase, uh, you know, like uh, lowercase Roman, uh, Roman letters, or it can be alphabets, small letter, small uh, uh, like lowercase letters, or it can be uppercase letters also. So let us see an example. So if I say order list type is equal to I. Then, if you see here, it is using the capital Roman letters. <coughs> now, I can also say so. Now, some of the uh, some of, some of the uh, places you can uh, uh, you want you want to use some order lists from a different number. It need not be from one, or it need not be from the first letter of Roman letter. It can be any other thing. Right? I, if I want to do that, I can do also. Uh, like I can say start equal to that particular value. So if I say start equal to four here, then the thing starts from number four. So let's start from number four. Then if I want to start the Roman letters from four, yeah, I can do that also. And it is possible with the other uh, like uh, types also. Now let us see an example here. Now here I given the start is equal to four, so it should be four, five, and six because I have started off with four. Next is the deal, that is the definition uh, definition list. Uh, here it has to be treated by giving deal and dt is for definition term and then dd for definition description so uh, you have to close the dt and then only you can create a, another dt another uh, definition term so if you see the output here this is the term there's the definition this is the term this is the definition and finally i have to close with a slash deal so this is all with the uh, list there are three types one is order unordered and the definition list then we are going to see what is an html table again this is some one of the most important topics under html so how to create a table so the first step in creating a table is to specify the table structure that is number of rows and columns location of the column headings and the placement of a table caption so once the table structure is in place you can start entering data into the table now how to create we see so graphical tables are enclosed with a two-sided table tag that identifies the start and the ending of the table so table and slash table are the tags that need to use to create a table and how to create a row you have to create a row by means of a tag called as tr then how to give the data for the table you have to use td so there's nothing called as tc so that's not, uh, like uh, there's no way to create a table column you can create only table rows so this is a small example so here table and slash table so i have created a row here then i given the data so table data I am giving two data here, right? One row, I am there is two uh, cells I can change, and I am closing the row. Then I am starting off with another row, 
then I'm giving a table data, table data, then I'm closing the row and then the table. So you see the structure. This is the structure you have to follow for any table. You can expand accordingly, according to your requirement, you can do that. But this is the base structure. So table and slash table, TR, TD are the base stacks which you can use. So this is how your table will look like. So here, this is the beginning of table structure. Then we have the table cells, like uh, the TR and we have a TD. Then this is the first row, in the first of six rows in the table, right? Then this is the end of the table structure. So you have to open and close the table and the table row, table data properly. Otherwise, you will get a, a page with a uh, table which is not created properly or it will not show at all. So what is th? It is table heading. So as you provide th tag for creating the table headings, text format of the th doc, uh, like a tag is centered in the cell and displayed in the bold face uh, font. So th is most often used for column headings, but you can use it for any cell that you want to contain the center uh, bold face text. So usually it is used for column headings. Okay, so when you use th, like by uh, like by default, uh, the text will be centered and it will be displayed as a bold text. Now, text in cells formatted with the th tag is bold and centered above each table column. That's what I told you. So this will look like this. It is centered and it is also bold. So we are using it as a uh, like a, uh, a title that is, uh, that is given for a particular column. So I have to give like this. First I am creating the table, then I am creating a row, then I am creating the table headings, then I am closing the table row, then I am going for the other row creations. So that in the first row my table headings are, will be displayed. Even I can use it in between also if I want some text to be uh, centered and also bold. Now, you can give table borders also. So by default, browsers display table without table borders. A table border can be added using the border attribute to the table tag. That can be given like this, table space border is equal to some value. So value is without the border than pixels. So the size attribute is optional, you can use size also. So if you don't, if you don't specify a size, the browser centers the table uh, border one pixel wide. So if you don't use the size, automatically the browser takes the size as one pixel so you can also give in this format like it can be either zero or if you if you give borders equal zero you will have uh, no border uh, you can give it as one five or ten whatever it is whatever number you want you can give it and you can get the border for the table so here i have given as five and it is having a thick border now the important attribute of this uh, table tag is cell spacing. So cell spacing controls the space, uh, the amount of space inserted between the table cells. Okay, that is the thing. So the syntax is like this: table cell spacing equal to value. So value is the width of the interior borders and vertices. The default space uh, is two pixels, and cell spacing refers to the space between the cells. Right? You have to note that it is between the cells. Now, this is an example. So, I am giving cell spacing equal to 10. So, we can see there is some space between the cells. Now, cell padding. To control the space between the table text and the cell borders, you can add the cell padding attribute. So, the syntax for this is table cell padding is equal to value. To, to control this, uh, the space between the uh, table text and the borders. The amount of space between the text that is displayed in the cell and the border of the cell. Okay. So let us see how it is. The default sizing will be one pixel. You can increase it if you want. So if you see here, I am giving cell padding is equal to 10. So you can see there is some space created between the uh, content of the cell and the border. 
this is cell padding so you have to know the difference between uh, cell spacing and cell padding cell spacing is uh, the space between the cells of a table and cell padding is the space between the content of the cell and the border of the particular cell so this is a different uh, like cell spacing values i have given this is zero cell spacing this is one this is five and this is Likewise, for cell padding also, I have given different examples. Then, how to create rules in tables? The rules attribute lets you control how the table grid lines are drawn. This is not supported by Netscape. Netscape, again, this is an older browser we have used before. Uh, so, the syntax of this uh, rules attribute is table rules equal to type. So, it can be either all, uh, rows, or columns, or none. So if I give it as all, all of them will have the grid lines. If I say only rows, then rows alone will have the grid lines. If I say calls, only the columns will have the grid lines. If I say none, none of the rows or column will have the grid lines except the border. Then the table size. I can uh, uh, say the width and the height of the particular table. I can specify uh, it by means of like width and the height attributes. And size is the, uh, is the width and the height of the table as measured in the pixels or as percentage of a display area. So it can be either in uh, pixels or it can be specified as percentage also. So to create a table whose height is equal to the entire height of the display area, enter the actual height as 100%. If you want it as a bigger one, you can have it as, uh, or if you want it to be equal to the entire height of the display area, you can give it as 100%. But if you want that to be a little smaller, you can specify it according to your requirement if you specify an absolute size for the table in pixels its size remains constant regardless of the browser or monitor settings used so if you specify absolute size for example uh, some 50 or uh, 10 or 20 without using a percentage it will be remaining constant even if it is uh, uh, it is not disturbed by the browser or the monitor settings it remains the same so you have to remember that some monitors display web pages at a resolution of 640 by 480 pixels. But rarely do we use this uh, now because we have, we have very big displays. Uh, but for uh, safety means, we uh, have to design accordingly such that it has to be supported by this display also. Cell and the column sizes. To set the width of the individual cell, add the width attribute to the TD and the TH. So the syntax is width is equal to value. So value can be expressed in pixels as I told earlier. Uh, it can be percentage also. So width value of 30% displays a cell that is 30% of the total width of the table. It will take the table as a reference. Height attributes also similar to the width one. So it can be used in TD or TH to set the height of the individual cells. So either it can be specified in pixels or it can be specified in percentage and you can include more text and can be displayed within the height value you specify and cell expands to display the additional text. So if you include more text than the, uh, that can be displayed within the height value you specify, the cell will expand actually to display the additional text. How to align table, you have to use an attribute, align, and you can give it as either left, right, or center, such that it will be aligned. So this is a, a table that is being aligned to, to its right. You can see it here. So here also I have aligned, I have given align equal to right. Here, I have given the caption align equal to top. Now, the caption is another very important uh, tag that can be used in the table to give a heading for the entire table. We have seen TH for giving the title for the uh, table columns, but here for the entire table, you can give the uh, heading as caption so that we display on top of the table. How to uh, span rows and columns. So I have to give this is also another very important uh, 
attribute that is row span and column span. So row span and column span, we will see how it works. So to merge several cells into one, you need to create a spanning cell. A spanning cell is a cell that occupies more than one row or one column in a table. So spanning cells can be created by inserting the row span and the column span attribute in the PD and the PH. So we can have some values and according to the value, the columns or the rows will expand. Now let us see an example. So it's an example. This cell expands like expands for two columns and two rows. You can see the size two rows and two columns. This cell spans for three columns. You see here there are three columns. Okay. So this cell spans for three rows. You can refer here and you can see it spans for three rows. Now how it can be done? So I have to say inside the TV, row span is equal to three. So that will combine three rows together. And you can also apply a background color for the table by giving uh, Lucy color attribute. It can be for the table or it can be for the for row or it can be for the data or it can be also, also for the table. You can apply for all these tags. So here I have to say like these colors white and yellow, light blue, light green. I told you right, I can give color names as you like. It need not be only the standard color names. So this will be like this. For the previous program, the output will be like this. You can also give border color also. Right? You have created borders, you can give a border color by giving like uh, table quarter color is equal to the color name or like the rectangle code. You can also give a background for a table also. So I can say table background is equal to some image. So it will get displayed at the back background of the uh, table. So you can also define page layout with table. So HTML tables are often used to define the layout of the entire web page. So if you want to design a page that displays text in newspaper style columns or separates the page into a distinct sections, you will find tables are an essential and useful tool. So tables will play a very, very important role in your web pages. To make some text stand out from the uh, other text, uh, this particular tables will be very, very useful. So this is a sample table. Uh, it's a sample table layout of a web page. So here you can have a logo, you can have a list of links here, and then you can have articles here, and then you have the address and the phone number here. So this is how you create one table. So I want to thank you for I I like to thank you for patiently listening to my lecture. Uh, thank you. We will meet in another uh, lecture. Please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. Thank you.